Rural Lifestyle, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamigo, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Gary, thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate your time. Glad uh, to be here. The new president for the Kansas uh, Wheat Growers Association. Yeah. Congratulations on, on being elected that. Uh, we're at the Commodity Classic. Let's talk about the Commodity Classic. Bringing together several different groups, mm -hmm. talking about probably one common issue, which is drought. That's, that's the one that's on the forefront. Uh, there's a uh, you can raise anything you want, or I always get a kick out of it. It seems like if your uh, uh, rain makes everybody a good farmer, uh, but you got to be a good farmer if you're going to survive when it's a drought. <laughs> well, uh, you've got a, a great panel of people talking today. Uh, one of them will be talking about supply and demand. Um, with the drought that we've had, demand, demand continually stays strong for, for grains here from the state of Kansas. But producing grains here in the state of Kansas puts a pressure on everybody. Oh, yeah. The, uh, well, and the, the thing of it is, uh, uh, some people, they think just because of a, when you have a drought, the supply drives the prices up. And uh, everybody thinks that if farmers are making money because uh, the prices are high, but usually you don't have a whole lot to sell. Right. <laughs> and so it's, it's not always a win-win situation, but uh, farmers are entrepreneurs and uh, it's amazing how you always find out certain things that uh, make that work in a farm, or I mean when it's in a drought. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it reveals character, it really does. Uh, and we were talking off camera and, and you dry, and you farm dry land, yep. and you put the uh, emphasis on dry. Yeah, um, this has got to be the worst, I, I'm always Mr. Optimistic, and I don't know if I'm getting older or what, but this has got to be the first year that our sub moisture, we've only got about, oh, a foot of sub moisture, and where I'm in a, a fallow operation, I let my ground set idle to build up sub moisture, and uh, it didn't happen in the last 16 months. And uh, we only we, we we normally get about 18 inches, and last year we only got nine. And uh, those the nine we didn't get was really needed, and uh, so we're we're living by the day by day as far as moisture goes. Um, being the new president, um, what are some of the roles and responsibilities you have to, to other Kansas wheat farmers? Well, the, um, as far as the Kansas Association wheat growers go, we more so uh, lean towards the uh, policy side of things, helping to, uh, like helping to get farm bills passed. And uh, the politics have really been playing a, they've been playing a role. I don't want to say it's a good role or a bad role. That would uh, mean I would be getting up on my soapbox, but it's been interesting and uh, we've got a long ways to go. <laughs> uh, wheat's one of those crops that, you know, is, Kansas is known as the wheat state, of course. Do you see that continuing? I mean, as we look at the fall, coming out of fall, coming into winter, not a lot of moisture. I mean, there's probably a lot of guys out hurting right now. Uh, yeah, but the uh, let's be uh, optimistic. Uh, we usually don't get a lot of moisture in January, and where it is a cooler month, uh, I'm gonna say pretty much the whole state has gotten more moisture this year than what we did a year ago. And so, uh, right now, uh, let's just try to gather our thoughts and hope for the next month. Be to, positive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Give Mother Nature good thoughts. Yeah, and because uh, if we dwell on what we don't have, uh, it's gonna make for a long month. <laughs> 